Hi there, welcome to Gardens and Graveyards. My name is Charisma and today we are in the backyard, in the garden, and we are going to do my absolutely most favorite task in the garden and that is pruning. And we have a lot to prune, but I think I'm being a little ambitious in my mind that for sure I wanna get this honeysuckle done right here and this maple done right there. And then after that, I'd like to take a look at my um, camellia and I'd love to get my lilacs pruned because they're just done blooming and now is the time to get them pruned. And all of those um, tasks are maintenance pruning, so I'm not doing any re rejuvenation pruning and nothing's like major. I think the, the biggest projects are these two right here. Now this honeysuckle, I trim back about three times a year. Um, as you can see, it's growing up over the garage. It likes to go in between the, um, the gutter and then it likes to start weaving itself underneath the roof shingles. So I have to prevent that from happening. It also starts growing that way over the man door to our garage. So I have to get that nice and tidy, but it's really just um, maintenance pruning. And then the maple is, um, I just need to limit up more so more light goes underneath for the plants that are underneath there. The other things are just gonna be like little prunings just to keep the keep their shape. Um, so it's gonna be um, kind of just that's, that's all I'm going to do. Spencer, you're going to see Spencer in the background. He's going right ahead of me and prepping the area. So he's weeding. We share this space with our dogs. So he's making sure there's no dog messes. So I can just concentrate on the pruning jobs. Um, pruning for me is kind of like a zen thing. So, so for some people it's weeding and some people it's um, like planting seedlings or transplanting small plants, that kind of thing. For some people it's mowing the lawn or watering. For me it's pruning. I just get really connected to the plant that I'm working on and everything else goes out of my mind. I'm not thinking about tomorrow or lists or dinner or anything like that. I can get really lost in my pruning jobs and I have to be mindful of time and um, you know, my body can only sustain so much. Sometimes I'll overwork myself and then I'll be like, oh, why did I do that? Because it hurts sometimes. But I don't think that's gonna be the case today because it's gonna be all just maintenance, pruning and simple. Um, I will give you close-ups of exactly how I'm gonna prune each one of these types of plants um, as I go along. And then at the end, we'll give you a tour of what it looks like um, and what I did. But mostly it's just, I'm gonna be in my zen state, trimming my trees and vines and shrubs, and let's get into it. A couple of things that I'm gonna be using for pruning is just um, handheld pruners and long handled loppers. And then I make sure that I have eye protection these ones are tented, which is really nice for sunny days like today. And then I have long sleeves on because when I get in the thicket of trees and that kind of thing, I could get scratched and it's just good. I, it's just a good idea to be a little bit protected. Um, it was just something that I learned in my education and my experience that I prefer to have long sleeves on. And if I'm doing something with like, um, weed eaters or some sort of electrical or gas powered equipment, I'm wearing jeans just to give myself that little bit of extra protection. So if you're new to gardening, make sure you're protecting yourself in every way that you can because things can get, um, you know, you could cut yourself out here, you can get hurt. The honeysuckle that I'm about to prune has like a sap in it and it get on my skin and be irritating. So it's just a good idea to have as much protection as I can so that way I can just enjoy my task and not be worried about, um, you know, being extra careful with my body. Okay, here is a close up of the honeysuckle. And all that I am going to be doing today because it has not bloomed yet, so it's not the ideal time to actually prune, 
it's just starting to get its little buds. You can see that, there it is. And it also has spit bug. This plant gets spit bug every year. Wait for it to focus, I hope. Um, let's see if I get another, there. Bugs do that, isn't that gross? <laughs> Anyways, after I prune it, I will um, just spray it down. It doesn't really do much damage to the plant. It's just kind of yucky looking. Um, and it's slimy, just like it's real spit. It's bizarre. Anyhow, um, so I'm gonna show you from the side. So this is from the side. I like to keep it about this thick. Um, so I'll be either weaving vines in to get closer into this lattice that's behind here, or I will be trimming it so it keeps that nice tidy shape. And then you can see how it comes over the door like that, and obviously I'm gonna get it out of the gutter. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna find where the leaf See where the leaves are right there? I'm just gonna go in right here and trim it. Same with over here. And then these extra vines can just come out. And then I'm just tossing them over here on this um, tarp because it's just quick and easy for me to not have to pay attention to where I'm tossing them they could just be in a big pile on this tarp and then I'll just drag the tarp to the compost bin you're probably gonna hear a bunch of construction in the background because there is a house being built right on the other side of my property so please excuse all that noise <laughs> view of this maple that I'm going to tackle and basically the goal is to get underneath here you can see it's a multi trunked maple I want to expose those trunks more so that I could see it from all areas in my garden and more sunlight can come underneath here. These are all shade loving plants, but they would appreciate a little bit more sun than they're getting right now. And I have some sun loving um, plants on the edge right here that are getting really shaded from the canopy. So I'm just gonna thin out the canopy a little bit and get the branches that are uh, trying to 
poke our eye out when we're walking down this path and limb it up. So that's what we're gonna do today. Once the tree was limbed up, I could go underneath and start working on the interior of the tree. So one of the things you were going to want to look for in trees, especially, are what's called suckers. So you can see all these little tiny branches coming out of the base of this tree, and those are just suckers they basically are the um, original rootstock of a tree and you don't necessarily want those to grow because you want the variety of the tree growing that you that you chose which is the one that's you know big and beautiful the other thing you want to do is keep standing back and looking at the overall shape of the tree to make sure that you're not doing anything too lopsided and you're liking how it's it's looking when you're pruning trees you want to make sure there's plenty of airflow so a good rule of thumb is to make sure that any branches that are growing um, in a direction that the tree doesn't naturally grow. In this case, we don't want any um, limbs growing straight up through the top of the canopy because Japanese maples are more of a horizontal branching, weeping form. And then of course I'm making sure that there's no dead twigs in there. And the other thing that I look for is any twigs or branches that are growing into the interior of the tree because eventually those are just going to be branches that cross and rub and cause um, wounds and opening in the tree branches so we just remove those and keep really good airflow.
all I have left to do is remove all the spent blooms on these two lilacs. You can see how tall that lilac has gotten and you can't see the Escalonia behind it. It should be short enough that I could actually see the Escalonia. So we're all done with that project. What a huge difference. You could see behind me, you could see the door totally clear and the honeysuckle is much smaller, no longer above the roof line. And you could see underneath the maple and very pleased with how all of this turned out. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and just give you an overview of what we did and that'll be it for the day so thank you so much for coming along with us on our garden journeys make sure you like and subscribe and comment if there's any questions that you have or any comments that you'd like to share with me any inspiration that you got from this video I'd love to hear about it until the next time keep celebrating life every day so here's this honeysuckle I still need to wash it down from the spittle bug but it feels so nice to have it clean and clear from the door and the roof line and the construction is still going on uh, but it just looks so much nicer and tidy like that and then over here we have the maple tree and we limbed it up quite a bit so you could see all the um, branching underneath there's some finesse that I'd like to do with that but um, for now, I'm happy. We could walk through here without getting poked in the eye, which is really important. <laughs> and then we worked on that camellia there. Um, just tidied her up and tucked all of them into the, the trellis that it's on. And then we... Um, basically just took the blooms off of the lilacs. Spencer did a fantastic job cleaning out these beds so they're weed free or pretty much weed free anyways. And he's working underneath all these roadies and the camellia that I just did. And um, probably in a week from now, we'll be doing all the rhododendrons, cutting back the rhododendrons. But I thought I'd just give you a quick look at this camellia bush. So you can see that it's, um, it's actually on a trellis that goes here and then it goes here. So it's like in an L shape. And just trying to contain this thing it was like this small when I moved in here uh, because this rhododendron, the butterfly bush, and this rhododendron were just completely covering it. I had no idea it was there until I trimmed back the rhodes. It's a nice little surprise. But this year, it only bloomed on the back side. So, I don't know. It's not getting enough sun in the front side, I guess. But on this side, all I did is um, wove the branches in between the trellises. I didn't have to do any trimming back here. 
um, just to keep it nice and tidy. And then, again, the lilacs just got their blooms taken off, um, and which brought the canopy down a little bit, and now you can see the differentiation between the lilac and then the escalonia, which gives it a layering effect. And then right next to it is this beautiful rose bush, and it, it's almost meeting. It's almost there, which is lovely, right? We want it to meet, I think. <laughs> I would kind of like to have the lilacs meet. There's a little gate right here. I would like to have them meet over the top eventually too. So, very accomplished in a short amount of time. Teamwork makes the dream work. This is the only lilac that I didn't get to, but this is this little adorable garden over here. Um, and I have some other things that I need to get done over here. So I think I'll probably do the lilac when I do the twinberry that's behind it and some other, um, I have some plants that I need to transplant. I have this canna escaping its raised bed. And then there's some cannas down there that are just too shaded out that I need to pull out and put somewhere else. So anyways, that's a project for another day. Again, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.